So this is what the box looks like out of the box. So you can notice hot and cold from the bottom being fed in. Yes, they are half inch. And then you have port A, port B, and port C. All of them are half inch as well. And your matrix, your piping matrix up front with your, your level area on the side. We give you your rough in dimension. So if your finished wall falls in between this area here, you'll be perfectly roughed in. And then also on the top, we give you a little diagram and a dimension for the tile. The tile should be within five millimeters or three sixteenths of the rough box itself. So when you seal it with caulk, it is sealed into the wall perfectly so no water can get inside the wall and cause damage. On the back side, this is one of your, your mounts so we can go up against a solid wall. Or we also have this mount that you can ratchet forward or back. And there are clips to lock it in place. So you can use this to solidly mount your, va your valve as well. So with every Grow Smart box, you do have a ledge to put a level on to make sure that the valve is level in the wall. And then on the front, we have a matrix showing you all the different piping diagrams. So for this one, we're using a shower head and a hand shower. So we will be using port B and C. And A over here, we will be capping off. So here we are on the back side of, of the wall. And as you can see, the hot and cold are coming in from the bottom. And then we have port A capped off for this configuration, port B going to our shower head, and port C to our handheld shower. Always cap off the port that is not being used. You do not want any surprises in your wall as this will always be under pressure. So for this configuration, we are using the front bracket or the front brace to mount the valve. You can see we have it mounted on a piece of half inch plywood. Um, the box will fit inside of a two by four wall, no problem. You can see there's plenty of room back here if they wanted to put the wood on the back side of the rough valve itself and mount it between the two two by fours. But in this case, we have it screwed into this piece of wood and we're using the front bracket and you can see it's very solid. So once you have your, your tile work up, you will need to cut back what's left of the box coming forward out of the wall and you can do that with a multi-tool. Um, I have it set at the low speed so I, I get a good cut and I'm going to try getting as close to the tile as possible. So once the, the tile work is done and the box is cut back, the uh, tile man did a great job getting up close, but we still want to seal it just in case any water gets in there and doesn't get into the back of the, uh, in back of the wall. So you can just use your caulk and go around. This is the, the control cartridge itself. This is what controls your temperature, your on off. The valve does not come with, or the cartridge does not come with service stops. They're optional pieces. Right now there's two plugs in the, in the unit, which a uh, 10 millimeter socket. You can go ahead and remove them. Pre-loosen that one. Those get thrown away. These are your, your service stops. You can see there's an O-ring on, on both of them. We do send along a little packet of lubricant. And I suggest just throwing a little grease on the O-rings before sliding them in. And you can thread them in until they bottom out. I suggest using a, a long socket or a deep socket to do this. And then you have your two little keepers. 
and they just snap on into place. And you'll hear them snap in. So with them threaded all the way in, the water is off to the cartridge. And this is where the deep socket does come in handy because now you can back it out. And it'll only go so far because of the keeper. And water is on. So just um, some tool you may need, tools you may need to uh, help service the, the smart control. Uh, 34 millimeter to fit your on off cartridge and then we have a 36 millimeter spanner will fit your thermal cartridge so with every trim kit we send a low flow kit in this case for a dual function and then a flow restrictor for the thermal element itself for the thermal cartridge flow restrictor gets put on the back side That's this piece here, and that just pushes in like that, and then the cartridge goes back into its spot, and you thread down the cartridge nut and snug it up. And basically that is installing your fl low flow kit. So now you're pretty much ready to, to install your cartridge, but before you do that, um, there is a flush plug in place. The flush plug's there so that you can flush out your hot and cold lines and whatever outlets you have, in this case, a shower and a hand shower. You just want to flush out any debris, any flux, any solder balls that, that may be in the lines while they were piping it in, just so you get a good, strong flow of water and that your, your thermal cartridge will work properly. So it's held in with just four Phillip head screws. So once you have the four screws removed, you're going to need a pair of pliers because there is an O-ring seal sealing it off to the inside of the box. And just grab one of the fins and pull hard. And that is your flush plug. You can see the O-ring seal that wraps around it. And you're ready to put your cartridge in place. So now we're ready to install the cartridge. So we're going to push it in. We're going to use these oval holes here to mount it inside the rough box. This is the cartridge that we used to install the service stops on, so they're already installed. The oval holes allow us to adjust the cartridge just in case it's not level, if the box isn't level in the wall. This will allow us to have our buttons level. So the cartridge itself will simply push into place, and then we'll use these four stainless steel screws to hold it in place. So now with them just snug, we can put the level in place and rotate the cartridge so it is level in the wall. There we go. And once you get it perfect, let's go ahead and firmly snug up all four screws. And we're done. On occasion, after the shower's up and running, you're going to find out that the hot and cold lines are reversed. In that case, a reversing cartridge is needed. So to install the reversing cartridge, first shut off your service stops with your 10 millimeter socket, which I've already done here. Take your 36 millimeter socket, loosen the nut on the cartridge, pull the cartridge out. Take your reversing cartridge. Here you have your little pimple on it. Line it up with the cutout on the inside of the valve. Push it in straight. There it goes. You'll feel it pop into place. Snug up that cartridge nut. And then back with your 10 millimeter. Open up your service stops hot and cold and at that point like any other thermostatic valve you'll have to go through your calibration procedure but once you have that done you're ready to go
So to, to uh, finish up our, our trim out here, we have to put on our backer plate. And uh, you can see the backer plate is actually marked top. And we have the two areas where the stems are coming through for your on-off buttons and for your thermostatic control. Now these stems need to be cut to the perfect length. And instead of pulling out a, a ruler and measuring it and cutting it, we give you these two templates. And it will push over. kind of like that, and then we'll cut the stems even with the white cap or the white guide. And we'll do that right here and now. To finish trimming out the unit, we have to put the backer plate on with these guides. These guides will allow us to cut the spindle, and these are your buttons to turn the water on and off and control your volume. They'll allow us to cut them at the perfect length so they're coming out of the wall, fitting into the, the decorative buttons perfectly. So you just cut right even with the white guide. And it's best to use a hacksaw, less vibrations than a power tool, and just cut them evenly. Now with this one, Plumber did a great job of roughing it into the max dimension. So there's really not all that much to cut off. doable. So one down, one to go. So once they're they're cut off, you can just So now we can remove the the backer plate once I remove the four screws. Now put the knob on. Put your white guide ring in place. You can see there's a little squared out piece which will go to the left. Just kind of put the knob in on an angle and there you go, push to snap it in place. There we go, and the same with the second one. A little rotation, and then you can remove your plastic stops, plastic extensions. You can see there's a, a groove, just line it up with the groove on the one that's in the wall, and they simply snap into place. Take your plate, push it over, and go ahead and reinsert your four screws. Just to cover some, some general maintenance, um, we do have the cartridge outside the rough valve right now. Usually it would be in the, uh, the valve, um, but this makes it a little bit easier. So here on either side, you have check valve slash screens. They can sometimes get plugged with debris. And they simply thread right out. It's an actual cap. And once the cap is removed, you can kind of see inside there's a check valve in there. I usually use just an angled needle nose pliers. You can grab it and pull it up and out. That's your check valve. And on the back side, you can see the screen you can just take it to a faucet in the house and um, flush off any debris that may be in there. And then it simply pushes back into place. You take your cap, thread it on, and snug it up. And there's one for hot and one for cold. You can also remove the thermo cartridge. There's a screen on there, or two screens actually, one for hot and one for cold. And there it is. And you can clean the screens here, grease your O-rings, and then just push it right back in. When pushing the cartridge back in, you can see there's a little protrusion there. And there's a cutout on the inside, probably kind of hard to see. But you just line those two pieces up and push the cartridge in straight and thread your nut back on. And that's as simple as it is.